Good morning and uh, welcome to the Starters Hut. We've got a very cold easterly wind today and uh, I need to stay out of it for as much as I can before I get out there. Now, I've had a question in the comments. One of our friends is struggling to get through a scoring barrier and the harder he tries, the worse it gets, which uh, is where we've all been at some point in our lives, haven't we? So I'm going to go out there, he's given me a number, break 90, 17 bogeys, one par. And the title of the video has come from something he said in the chat. Now the first hole here, we've got a valley to get across. And it's into this easterly wind today, so it's going to play 40 or even 50 yards longer than its length. So let's take a club that we can just get across the valley with into the wind don't try and belt it all you're going to do is put more spin on the ball and if it's side spin then we're going down the road like the two gentlemen who are playing in front of me today unlike the pair in front of me i'm just taking the three wood i can't reach against the wind so why try if you hit it smooth it's going to go straight and not down the road from here, I can't reach except with a perfect three wood. So why try? Let's give ourselves a good number. This is intelligent golf and we've got ourselves a good number. All I've got to do here is stay left of this flag so I can have an uphill putt. Job done. When you play it this way, and sometimes strange things happen. Don't be afraid of planning to make a bogey from the tee. You're a high handicapper, you're going to make a lot of bogeys today. What you got to do is choose the moment when you're going to find that par and choose wisely. This second hole is a good opportunity for a par, but it's into the wind today. And if you put side spin on the ball into the wind, it magnifies the amount of turn on it. Still into the wind, so I'm just taking the bare minimum to get over the mound. And it's a good job I did, because I hit that absolutely awful. And I've got an awful lie. So let's just take the bare minimum that's going to get over the next mound. It's into the wind today. The chances of getting there in two are rather slim anyway, so why lose a ball trying? And sure enough, we've got ourselves a good number again. So even though we're playing for the bogey, the opportunity for a par is still there, even though I've hit this on the high side. Right, that is too nasty into the wind holes out of the way. If we assume you've just made two two putt bogeys, then we're right on track for your score. Now we're going downwind. Now we have an opportunity to get that par that we need except the further you go the narrower it gets that sometimes happens on golf holes so perhaps we ought to reel back a little bit and go with the three wood instead of the driver that's normally into a clever wind so now we're going downwind let's just hit the three wood That's a good job I did, because that was an awful low slicey thing. The driver would have put me in bother. And just an eight iron, and we want to be short of this flag. This is most definitely our first opportunity for a par, so let's not foul it up. Now when you're long lagging, especially on a lot of slope, over borrow. A putt that's over borrowed stops by the hole. A putt that is under borrowed 
slivers away down the slope four or five feet. And you know that's true. The most powerful word in golf. Don't go in the water right. Don't go in the trees left. Don't go in the bunker. And don't three putt it just like you did last week. The most powerful word in golf is negative. And that is why it harms us so much. This don't, don't do something is not an instruction for how you want to do something. So every tee box in the world, by all means, come and stand here, look down the hole, identify the hazards. Then identify the target, where you wanna go, how far you wanna have into the green, and what club is gonna get you to that point. And then make a positive mental effort to hit the ball to that point. Your golf is a, is a game of aiming. But you don't just aim with your body. You have to aim with your mind. If you're stood here thinking, don't do this and don't do that, where's the instruction to yourself to actually do something and achieve what you want to achieve? Aim with your mind as much as your body. So down the wind, I'm just going to take a five iron to my normal spot. But I've hit it awful, so it's not going to be in my normal spot. In fact, I'm further back and on the downslope. This sometimes happens, even when you've got loft in your hand. That was a bit bottom groove, but it was straight, and it's run up the green to make me look good. But that is two awful shots on a hole that we're trying to make one of our pars on. But sometimes you do, you get the par. Now talking of don't, I don't want to go in the bunker. So I've identified the fringe, the apron of the green. And I've hit another bad shot because this is very, very short. I wonder if the wind is hitting the hill and coming back at me. But anyway, it's a straightforward pitch. Reasonable lie in the first cut. I'm only a little bit short of where I intended to be. It's not too difficult hitting a decent pitch off a fluffy lie. You just aim to get under the hole and have the uphill putt. A long hole. So we're going to play this as a three-shotter and I'd forgotten it was down the wind. So there's the three wood into the middle of the fairway. And talking of don't on this hole, it's don't go right. You don't want to be in the farmer's field. Flag is back right. So if we play short left, we can chip up the length of the green. And again, I'd forgotten it was down wind and we actually made it. Sometimes videos do not go to plan. It's funny how powerful the word don't is. <laughs> well, the don't here is don't go right. So I'm playing for the front edge of the green. No more than that. And this is how we break our 90, is by playing a little cautious. Now that's bounced in rather nicely. It leaves me a chip up the green. Imagine the disaster if I'd taken a club that would actually reach this flag and I'd missed right. We're not breaking 90 then. A little bit of a putt to sweat over. And we've got the par. Now not all holes are three wood holes. I've determined that this fairway is wide enough for driver. So I'm going to hit my driver. And this is most definitely wide enough to have a pop at the front edge of the green. So I'm going to have a pop at the front edge of the green. 
And this is what we must do when breaking 90, is choose our moments for having a go at things. Now it's very important to give yourself an uphill putt. So I need to get past this flag. Yeah, that's, that's definitely past the flag. A very long way past the flag. But we've made a par or so, so it doesn't matter too much if we make the bogey. Good lag, just starts to turn in at the end. Ah, a little break by the ninth tee. This is going to be back into the wind, depending on what the wind's doing, it's turning round. So this is going to be a bogey hole, we're going to play it for a five. If you're going to play it for a five, then you don't need to hit driver off the tee. Ignore my score and what's going on in my particular game. Just think about the process. That we're going to choose our holes to make our 17 bogeys on and keep them to a bogey. Don't let them grow into a double bogey. And then pick the holes that we're going to target for that par. And then play the hole sensibly. You take the 10th, it's only 265 yards or something. You see me hitting driver up there all the time. If you've got a hole like this on the course and you're trying to break a scoring number, then perhaps the best thing you can do is to lay up off the tee to your favorite wedge distance rather than taking the driver like I do. Now I've done a bit of ball ratting going round and today the losers are the three T's. Tightlist, three of them. Taylor Made, three of them. And Top Flight, three of them. Who on earth is playing a 1990s golf ball in 2024? Now this fairway is wide enough for driver, so I could go driver again. But I'm hitting three wood. We've set our stall out to make a bogey. So let's go and make the bogey. Green is round the corner. So I'm just going to shape it that way. The ball was below my feet. It was going to go that way. I do not know how it got down here. It really shouldn't have done. Perhaps it found a firm bounce somewhere. But that's what happens sometimes when you're playing for a bogey. And I chuff that, so we really are playing for a bogey now. We do hold some of these and some we misread a little bit and we make the bogey. Five iron up here. Let's put the driver away. It is a bit narrow. And it's a hole that we want to par on to break our 90 and a hole that we don't want to mess up. I've given myself a good number. 106 up the hill. Nice easy 9-iron. And it's funny, when you're not under pressure, when you've got a favourite club and a favourite distance in your hand, next thing you know is you're pin high and it's an awful lot easier. If I'd hit driver up there today with all the wind about, I could have made a double on a hole that I was targeting for a par. Now this fairway's wide enough. So in breaking 90, I aim at a bush in the left rough and just let my shape do its thing. And the reason I can do this is it is incredibly wide and the rough on the, on the right is incredibly wide. So I determined this hole is wide enough for the driver. You see how much I faded it? I'm in the middle of the fairway when I was aiming at the left rough back flag I want nothing to do with that part of making a par every now and then is not taking on stupid flags the middle of the green is just fine even if you can't read the putt You've got to practice your backhanders well I'm sure you all know 12 by now it's this hole that gets narrower and narrower it's only 285 yards so you don't need to hit driver off the tee to get your par here. Although that was a bit horrid because I finished up in the 
right side. The flag is on the right. We don't want to miss right. So we target the left side of the green. But it does leave us an incredibly difficult putt. When the flag is over here on the right and you bail out, it is very, very difficult. And that's going to be a challenge for the par. But if we've already got one or two pars in the bank, the odd three putt on a difficult green isn't really that painful. Flag is back right, so I've changed my tee position so I can see the flag. Now we forget about the flag and we aim at the fat part of the green. That's how you get your pars on your sort of like shortish par threes is by ignoring the flag. You go for the biggest part of that tennis court. And even if you've got a downhill and you've got a cagey put it down there, it doesn't matter. You, you know, you've, if you were after a par, well, you've got it. Right, the first par five. Now, par five is a hole that we should be targeting for a par or trying to our best to get a par. But the two here at the Herefordshire for high handicappers, for people trying to break 90, they're not par holes. They, they really aren't. So we've got to be sensible and play for that bogey. So uh, instead of trying to hit it over the trees with the driver, Let's go down the left with a lofted wood to the part of the golf course we can actually see. And then we play down this hole like a game of chess and we get that six, net five, and we move on and we try and find the par somewhere else. Well, it's three wood and let's play safely out to the left, even though out to the left is going to be in the rough. It's not particularly deep. That flew because I forgot that this is downwind today. It's normally into a favourite six iron. Why try so hard? Let's just hit a decent shot with a favourite club. Get that bit closer, get in the fairway, give ourselves the chance. Now an eight iron down the hill. Long walk for the divot. Now I caught the group in front, so I let them finish 15, I let them tee off 16 and walk to my left out of the way. And I don't know if that little break switch my mind off or whatever but this was another of one of those shortish par threes that we could target for a par again you would aim for the fattest part of the green you'd ignore the flag get it in the fat part hit a 30 footer up by the hole and take your par although mine was a bogey very narrow so five wood and the two balls just appeared in a golf cart which um, always puts me under some sort of pressure. Good job I didn't hit more than five wood there. So we choose the favourite six iron. We just move the ball closer. It, it, it is better to hit a good shot with a six iron than an awful shot with a five wood. And now a favourite seven iron. It's surprising how hitting good shots with favourite clubs does your score the world of good rather than hitting bad shots with clubs you hate. So there's, there's always chances for pars, even if you've said yourself on the tee, I'll probably make a bogey here. A narrow hole and a short hole. Five wood, up the left, bounce it down off the slope into the middle of the fairway. 
and a very simple gap wedge. Well, it should have been simple. And all the rest of this is a rush. It's a rush because two people in a golf cart are stood in the fairway, tapping their heels, wondering when I'm going to get out the way. And that is the big, big issue with golf carts. Is they move much faster than somebody who's walking, whether they've got a camera or not. So I'll take the double bogey, I'll move on, We'll see if we can finish properly. 18th tee, 298 yards, 5 wood. Right then, in conclusion, I lost my rag there a little bit. I had a golf cart appear behind me with a few holes to go and, you know, they're on the tee before you've reached your ball. Then you play your second shot and they're in the middle of the fairway waiting before you've reached the green. Golf carts on a golf course where 99.9% .9 of people walk are a pain in the backside, literally a pain in the backside. And I stuffed up 17 because of it. So, 17 bogeys, one par. I don't know you, I don't know your golf course, I don't know what shape you hit the golf ball with the driver. I only used it, I think, twice in that round. So from the very start, from the very first tee, you've got to set your stall out of which holes you're going to use driver, which hole you're going to use fairway woods, and on the really short ones perhaps you're going to use an iron. The whole thing is, is about giving yourself a decent number into the green. And if you give yourself a decent number into the green, whether it's a 70 or a 90 or a 110, if you can keep repeating that, with clubs which are easy to hit, you're going to hit a lot of greens in one over regulation. And every now and then you're going to hit it close enough to get the par that on the tee box you said, I'm not going for a par. But you get one anyway, if you see what I mean. On the holes where you want to make a par, on those shorter holes, whether they're par fives, fours or threes, on those shorter holes where that you are targeting for the par, then again, give yourself a decent number. Don't go pushing the envelope. If you've got a hole of 320 yards and you can hit your 9 iron 120 yards, then just hit it 200 off the tee. If you've got 280 or even that shortest hole, which I think is about 265 up the hill, where you see me hitting driver all the time. There's nothing to stop you hitting a lofted club to your favourite number, and that favourite number you're going to be more reliable with. So you're going to get it close. So not only have you secured the par, but you've got a putt for birdie. Finally, the most important thing about golf, you just got to wear a bright shirt, and everything comes good. Cheerio.